Hey guys, and uh, welcome to a pro level replay analysis where we're going to look at two pro gamers named Rainer, or actually pronounced Renor, and Liquid Kim. Just kidding, it's Rainer versus Clem, okay guys? Okay, so let's see how this is going, okay? So first of all, first things first, you gotta know, Terran's bullshit. And uh, we're just gonna watch from Raynor's perspective and talk about how hard this game is and how only Raynor can overcome the imbalance. <sighs> I'm just joking. This, we're gonna take a serious look, okay? No bias, no bias. All right, so Terran's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> okay alright so so far you know nothing's really going on we're gonna see what's going on uh, super standard depot from Clem nothing really awkward no cheeky 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 depot in the middle line for some super quick depot he's getting a traditional wall Rainer is going for a 13 overlord also super traditionally standard nothing crazy look at Rainer stacking those close patches what a good boy what a good boy. See, guys, Rainer does it. If Rainer does it, it doesn't matter how many times Vibe says it, but if Rainer does it, do it yourself, okay? Look at Rainer. He understands stacking close patches. He likes to make extra money to get faster hatcheries. He knows what he's doing. All right, so we got a gas going down with a barracks. This is a Reaper expand versus a standard uh, hatch gas pool from Clem. Or, uh, sorry, from Rainer. So... Yeah, super standard game. This, honestly, this map, I will just throw it out there and say this. I'm going to pause it really fast and just say this really fast. This map is aggressively favored, in my opinion. This map is super tiny, and any map that is a fucking bloodbath, it's like a little phone booth map, it favors the aggressor usually. Uh, but the scary thing is, is I think in, overall in ZVT, it's hard to be the aggressor as Zerg unless you fully commit to an all-in. Because if you just kind of half commit to an all-in, it doesn't feel good. You, you can't just like do a little bit of a pressure and then be like, cool, I'll just make drones now. You have to be very creative and sneaky about how you do that if, if you do something like that. Because the Reaper can spot it, and if it does, and the turn prepares, you just get fucked. So you got to be careful. Uh, Zerg is either really committed or not committed. So, But again, I do think this matchup, or this map, this map favors aggression. This map is super tiny and it really does favor aggression because it, it, it's hard. It's, this map is one of the harder ones to play defensive on. So we'll see what they do. But it looks like a, a Reaper, a 1-1 one, one so far. Like a Reaper into it, a command center into a factory is probably going to be what Clem is going to do. And uh, Hatchcast Pool with speed is going to be what Rainer is going to do. It's super standard right now. <coughs> super duper duper standard. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We got another drone heading out for the third base. Probably in a second. He'll probably mine some minerals and go take a third. Let's see how he deals with an SCV being in his way. Or maybe he actually will delay it. We'll see. No, there we go. There's a drone going right now. He'll probably just make a gas. Uh, Clem, on the other hand, is there you go. There's the factory with the marine behind it. Super standard. Engineering bait block. Total fucking dirtbag move. Uh, the thing that sucks is, is this third is really, you, you really don't want to. This map is one of those maps where there's not really like, oh, just go take your other third. It's totally fine. Because if Rainer took this as his third base, this cliff with tank push is a fucking nightmare to defend on this hatchery. Like, you get tanks up here, and you also could reveal with, like, a medevac over here or some shit, and you could see Zerglings rotating around, and a tank can suddenly shoot Lings way the fuck over here. And it can all, if they try to rotate around. And it can also shoot Lings coming down the ramp over here if the tank is right there, because it can shoot, like, halfway to the ramp. And then, it, it, you know, if Marines are over here just, like, poking back and forth on the hatchery, the tank can shoot, like, you know, like that far over there. So the Marines could stand, like, right there shooting the hatchery. So it, it, this spot would be a nightmare to defend a third base with. So this is super obnoxious by Clem, but it's also super smart. 
because Zerg does not want to take another third. Like, this fucking third is the only third that's really viable on this map. So if you block the third, it's fucking annoying. All Zerg has to do now is Zerg has to now overcommit to kill this. And the Reaper now will either super delay the third base for sure. Or the Reaper, the Reaper will also potentially get a lot of kills if the Zerg overcommits and gets fucked up. It's not. It's it's terrible. This is really annoying for Zerg. And behind behind this clip is just going reactor Hellions with a one base or uh, with one gas super standard again. That was a good block though. That that block is super smart. And he's probably gonna further progress it now that he can push the drone off. Uh, and he'll just increase the HP of it because he can always cancel it. It's the same cost either way. <laughs> so Raiders just kind of run to the queen over there. But now this is exposing his drones again, which is just fucking annoying once again for him. So I think it's smart to bring the Lings over here ASAP while the Reaper is busy dealing with drones. Like you want to, like he was gonna send the queen over there, and ideally get the, rid of the SCV and just still help start killing the engineering bay. But then he brings the Reaper, the queen back because the Reaper goes into his base. I feel like the queen really doesn't want to go over there as a whole. The Reaper, want, the Queen always wants to go where the Reaper is, essentially. So the fact that he brought the Queen back, I think that's correct. And to be fair, I actually think, as, as crazy as this sounds, I think it might have actually been correct as well for him to make it look good to Klim. To go, hey, my Queen's not in my mineral line. Go attack my mineral line. Because him having to build and cancel two Spore Crawlers to get the Reaper out of his base is actually better than the Reaper focusing over here and keeping this thing alive longer. So the 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 fact that the Lings just bypassed it and just went to go kill this so that he, you know Raynor could uh, cancel the gas, retake the hatchery, this is more important right now. Getting the third base down is more important than just zoning the Reaper until you have Zergling speed. You definitely do not want to fucking take your third base by the time you have Ling speed. It's so late. So good play by both of them, in my opinion. Uh, Klim forced a reaction out of Raynor, but both players, I think, are doing it properly. If the queen went over here as well, I'd be like, oh my god, Ra Rainer's going to die. But the queen coming back is fine. No drones should die. So that was a little annoying. He just has to cancel now, and then I can kill, kill this and build the hatchery. Good play by Clem, and good counterplay by Rainer. Okay, Rainer's doing a 1-1-1. Second gas started uh, right before the starport. Or right, ab right about the same time as the starport, but like it is right a little bit before it. <coughs> uh. <laughs> He's going into a tech lab on a barracks. This could be to rotate over to a starport, or you could actually just get an upgrade and go straight bio with this. It really is up to... Like, 111 could be anything, really. It's really up to him to what he wants to do. Uh, I'm going to look at Raider's build again for a second. So he goes one out of three once he gets Zergling speed. He mines gas all the way back up to 72. So far. He's almost fully saturated on the natural. He's getting close. Queens are just trying to zone with Overlord spread. I like his Overlord spread. It's good to deal with Hellions to like spot them. He fully saturate. He fully saturated the natural, and now he's gonna put a drone back on the gas in the main base. <laughs> and he's not saturating the third yet because the third is delayed, and also there are Hellions out. So yeah, I like I like it so far from Raider. He's back to 3 out of 3 on the gas. Now what's he going to do with his gas? He's actually making queens in the main base. Again, Raynor is doing a good job of denying scouting with marines. He actually made double marine. Okay, so he actually made one marine, then he made all the add-ons and shit. But he made a second marine because he's actually committed into going tech lab on the barracks. He's not actually rotating over. Uh, so there is going to be no Banshee. There is going to be no future fusion core for BC. Anything like that. This is just straight up like Hellion Liberator Harass into straight fast bio. Uh, and this reactor might stay, just honestly stay on the 
factory if he wanted to make quick widow mines. We'll see what he does. Like this could develop into like really fast widow mine drops even if he wanted to just like make a medevac right after the liberator. But I I mean I don't know exactly what he's going to do for Clem, but third base, this build is very open-ended. He could do whatever he wants and obviously he's going to go bio cuz he's already committing a step pack. Rainer going into uh just one gas speed and he's still droning. Uh, this is very light on the Zerglings, very heavy on the Queens. Like, there's not really many safety links. There's like eight links in total, and this is including the initial four. And he also made two more go scout. He actually poked the front door. I think he even saw the third CC. He did see the third CC. So he got a good read. That was a good scout. And this is without Overlord speed. So that was a super good scout. Now it's just don't lose creep timbers, don't lose larva, and uh, don't lose drones. <clears throat> and for Clem, it's the opposite. It's kill larva, kill creep timbers, kill everything that he can. There we go. There's some more safety links. That, that feels a bit better for Rainer. He like squeezed out as many drones as he could, as long as he could. And it worked, obviously, because he did, he, did, he did a good job with his queen placement. Okay, there's a liberator. Spore is going to kill it. <coughs> uh, yeah, Clem's, uh, or I mean, the Raiders' creep threat so far is pretty good. Just especially considering the fact that there are six Hellions and a Reaper roaming. This is some pretty good creep threat overall. That was pretty smart. Creep tumor kill right there for not actually having to burn a scan because you just use the rocks to, like, splash it down. Raider is going still. Okay, there we go. He's going actually 1-1 one, one upgrades before layer. And now he's exploding all of his gas. So this is like priority of upgrade. No priority of uh, Bane speed. Now I'll say this. In my opinion, this is kind of scary versus siege tanks. I think no Bane speed priority is scary versus siege tanks. Uh, and weapon upgrade and melee upgrade is kind of scary. And the reason why is because... Back in Wings of Liberty, if you did shit like this, if you got Carapace on a Zergling, it would make the Siege Tank no longer one-shot a Zergling because the tank only did 35 damage to light units back then. And now it does 40 universally. So no matter what upgrades a Zergling has, 1, 2, or 3 Carapace, even if a Siege Tank has zero weapons and a Zergling is level 3 Carapace, a Siege Tank will still always one-shot a Zergling in Siege Mode. So this puts a lot of... Uh, stress I feel like on getting a good engage with the Zergling but it does also open up a lot of avenues of counterattack potential so this is uh it, it's strong as fuck aggressively so I actually to be honest if we're talking about uh, like a bailing speed priority that is a defensive response to a siege tank opener doing this is an aggressive response to a siege tank opener and what did I say at the very beginning of this this map caters to aggression <clears throat> so I actually think this is super smart by a Raider. I think him prioritizing 1-1 one, one and then going Banes after is actually better because it means he'll, ha he'll have the ability to not only fight... If he has good micro, he can like split decently against like a Siege Tank shots, but like wrap around and get on top of the Marines. It, may it definitely makes Lings way better against Marines. But if he ever gets Lings in the base and kills SCVs, that's fucking huge. Because the Lings are going to kill SCVs such fast so at such a faster pace. And uh, Raider sat on pretty much one gas until he was like two and a half mineral lines. Then he took a second gas around that time. And now he's taking gases three and four after he's fully saturated on three bases. And he also took his uh, Evo Chambers probably around the time when he took his second gas. I didn't actually see that, but that's what it looks like. Uh, then Queen Wise. He's rocking six queens. That's kind of actually like he initially pumped a bunch of queens, but then he kind of just stopped. That's kind of crazy. I guess that, to be fair, the, the fact that he saw the third command center probably made him stop pumping queens. But the fact that he saw uh, bio focus, like a uh, green fucking uh, tech lab barracks. So he's like, I don't need to go crazy, crazy queens because it's not going to be BCs or some shit. And then Clem is going for a bit of a timing. 
I really like this. I really, really like this from, from Clem. Because here's the thing. See this shit? There is a spot of bio. Now, this could either be for one of two things. This could be for a counterattack or it could be for a flank. It could do either thing. But the fact that Clem is leaving Hellions defensive completely shuts down the counterattack potential. If Clem had these Hellions with this army right now, it would increase the power of this army for sure. But look at the third base and how exposed it is. All these SVs would die. All these mules would die. His third base would have to lift off. He would stop having. He would stop being able to produce SCVs. It would suck ass. It would totally fuck over his macro cycle of his third. His base and the main base and natural would be fine, most likely, if he just loads that or lifts up that depot. But right now, Claim could just load up the depot, have these marines shoot behind the wall, and the zerglings can't get in because this is a full wall. Uh, if the depot is raised. And the Hellions, all they have to do is tuck themselves into the mineral line, and these Lings will do jack shit if they go for the counter. So both players doing well. And I think the best move that could happen from here would be <coughs> for Raynor. Uh, he runs across the map. He gets shut down. He gets shut down. He runs back, and he sandwiches this army before it regroups with a new army. For Klim, he sets up siege tanks quickly on a cliffside or something like that and then he tries to get the best most efficient position to take as many lings with him as he can but this army should die if Raynor plays it in my opinion right which is he just doesn't throw the units away obviously at the base but he attempts the counter attack but seeing that Klim plays defensively you know then that's what happens and Klim's response as well should be not only getting his you know tanks like on the high ground and or like getting his tanks ready to go and covering the tanks but the second he sees the counterattack run back towards his bio to sandwich it, these Hellions come over and try to prevent that from happening. Like the Hellions actually become aggressive as soon as Raynor fails a counterattack. Because your unit amount right now is limited, and if he see if Klim sees Raynor's units go away from his base again, he's like, oh well, his army his the rest of his army is actually running back towards my other chunk of my army, then the Hellions should chase the Lings and try to prevent the sandwich from happening. Good scan on the creep. So this is... There we go. That was... Uh, you know, it was an attempted flank. And then the Hellions actually came forward. Uh, I feel like... I will say this. I feel like... Watch this. I feel like there was a bit of like... Uh, ships in the night kind of situation going on there. Like, watch this. Bio walking over this way. Lings coming over this way. Now, look at this. If these Lings actually ran this way... And went for the counterattack like we were talking about. Look at Clem's vision. He actually does move the Hellions out early. Now, to be fair, he doesn't go all the way. He sits right here. This also, in my opinion, is super smart. I like obviously I'm not as good as Clem is, but I actually think what he did here is even better than what I said, where he just leaves them here and puts them in the back of the middle line. And the reason why is because he could use these Hellions to very easily spot oh lings right here and you're gonna run to my wall and then run down and in the time it takes you to do that i'm gonna run from here to there like hellions can get down from here to here just as fast as lings can go from like here to here like pretty much off creep hellions and lings are almost the same speed lings are slightly faster uh so with that being said his scvs if he really needed to like if he wasn't reacting immediately if he took like one second too late, he could take the SCVs and green box and right click here on a mineral patch and he could just run towards his Hellions and then kill the Zerglings. But what he does, what happens here is these Hellions now can also reinforce even easier if a counter attack approaches and that's exactly what happens. So instead of, instead of, a, or sorry, if a flank happens, so instead of actually preparing for a counter attack, which he was still kind of prepared for because he stopped here, he's prepared for both. But now that this is happening, he reacts by sending these dudes up. That was, that's actually even smarter than what I said. It's even better because this positioning is like super fucking effective. Now he just goes up and flanks the, the flank. He actually flanks the flank. And that makes it to where this hatchery is going to die now. That Hellion play he just did made this hatchery die. Because if that Hellion play was not there and it was too far away and these tanks got flanked and there was like Ling Bane on the front and Ling, just Ling's countering the tanks on the back. If these tanks die and it's just Marines and there's Bane Ling's as well. There's not a whole lot Marines can do against Banes and Zerglings, especially if they're 1-1. One, one. Because if he tries to, like, stim pack, stutter step, like, focus fire Banes, yes, you could do that, but it's super fucking hard. 
And also the scary thing is, is if he's got zero, zero Marines versus one, one Lings, which is actually not done yet. The carapace is done, but the weapon melee is almost done. Well, but the point is, is if the, the Lings are actually melee upgraded and they're like beating on the Marines at a faster pace, that's fucking scary. Like, it, it, it is very threatening for Terran if the tanks can't help just thin out the lings really easy. So that was a good move by Clem right there. I think that was maybe a little bit of an overcommitment though. Honestly. If we're talking about perfect play, this was good. The second that was killed, I think engaging this was greedy by Clem. And the reason why is because of this. There are, uh, what is this? This is 13 Marines, two tanks, and two medevacs. I actually think what should have happened here is, if, if you really think about it, I think that the, the scan to kill creep and whatever is fine. That's totally fine. The, the, the thought of engaging forward is totally fine from Klim. But I think if we were talking, if we were talking about perfect play, okay, and one one also is finishing for Clem now, so he actually this is a great time to engage as well. It just finished, so he could he could totally take advantage of that. Look at Clem's third. I'll talk about that in a second. That is why this shit goes fucked up. By the way, you're right. It's correct. We'll talk about it in a second though. But this is why you can't play perfect. By the way. But if you were to be Terran here and you were to think about it like this, where you were to go, okay. I'm going to stim pack my Marines forward. I'm going to hit these Zerglings and I'm going to center step backwards towards the tanks. The second your Marines have to load into the medevac, you immediately unseed your tanks and you only load one medevac of Marines. You boost your medevacs away. So you, you might lose like five Marines in, in total here because that's how many can't fit in the medevac. But you save eight of them and you kill a bunch of Lings in the process. And then the second you load up your, your medevacs and the other Marines have died, which will be really fast. All the links are now running to the tanks, but you've just unseeged them. So now the, the other medevac, as it boosts backwards, can load them up and fly back to base. That would be a perfect attack if he would have done that, and it would have been super effective. But one of the reasons why he didn't do that, which is exactly what uh, Thorn in the side said in the chat, is look at this. So Hillian's zone him out. Be like, hey, fuck you. This is this is what, like a pro game. Both players are doing really good shit, right? So. Good move by Klim to kill the hatchery, right? You're like, okay, well, the Zerg just lost the hatchery. This sucks for Zerg. <clears throat> Zerg is now uh, losing the fourth base and so on and so on, whatever. Zerg pulls back and base dies. But Zerg does counterattack now. All those units that were going to try and flank the tanks now, because the Hellions are now still kind of waiting around, these Hellions, I feel like, <clears throat> possibly... I'll say this, okay? This is this would be perfect play by Clem. This would be absolute perfect play by Clem, in my opinion. If the Reaper was sitting, like, right here, for instance. Like, right there. Just the Reaper. And maybe, like, a Marine sitting, like, right there. What would happen is, is it would be a spot that we would, would go, like, Oh, Lings are in my base. And that's what this Hellion job is for. These Hellions... Because they did, they, this, like both players are playing relatively greedy. Raider played very low gas, very high mineral based, and Clem played 1 1 1 with three commands that are super fast. Both players are playing relatively greedy, and these Hellions' job right now in the game is to not allow the Lings to get, like, they're supposed to counter the Lings, essentially, that do shit like this. They're supposed to counter the Lings that jump on the tanks if that happens, or they're supposed to cover the mineral line. So I feel like Clem had the, the idea here when he stopped the Hellions there a minute ago to go either way. But now that he's getting caught up in the moment where he's killing fucking... S S or he killed a couple drones. He killed some lings. He killed a queen. And he's killing the hatchery. This is that moment where Terran's like licking his lips like... Damage. I'm getting damage. Right? And the Zerg is like... Sack it and do damage back. Like, like take a hit to the face but then like punch my opponent in the stomach or something. Uh, and he's just... Re and Raider's also re-expanding to the other side of the map. This is super good like bouncy like like he takes it a hit and then he bounces it right back into the Terran the Terran not being in position with his aliens to deal with this is fucking really bad for him so a lot of shit is going to probably take some damage here this is nice to cover the natural but the third is super exposed so this is a really good this is just a really good like awareness and timing for Raynor to go for I will say it is a bit of a risk though because like it's not guaranteed and it, 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 with that being said it doesn't mean that Raynor has to like lose the Lings if the Hellions are in position because Lings are faster 
So if Raynor initiated and went, oh, Hellions are here again, it would just mean that Raynor would take a little bit of a loss because he would lose his fourth, and that's just the end of the day right there. That's all said and done. That's what happened. But because Hellions are out of position, because he's still trying to cover the tanks, this is fucking huge. Like, now this is going to happen. And then now while this is happening, Raynor jumps on the tanks as well while he's keeping this shit busy. This is an overreaction, I think. I think that is an overreaction. But to be fair, okay, not really. I'll say why. Initially, I would say this is an overreaction because he's going to lose all these units, probably. But his Hellions are on the way back, and he's trying to save his SCVs. He, like, he would rather lose a couple of Marines than all of his SCVs. I, I get that. That makes sense. It's just, I feel like these units should be actually... Like, you could initially engage. Like, don't bring the tank, though, in my opinion. Like, the tank should be sitting, like, right here or something like that. Maybe not in siege mode, because Ling's with Ling's chasing SCVs and clumps like this when the tank is siege is kind of fucking scary. Because you might actually end up friendly firing your own units really hard if the Zerg just runs into the SCVs. <coughs> but... If the or maybe the tank sits unseaged right there, just to like block the door, and if the marines were stim packed forward and just shot at the zerglings to get the aggro of the lings off of the SCVs, and they stim pack stutter stepped back to the doorway, I feel like that would have been best case scenario because if this army gets surrounded right now, that sucks ass for Terran, and all he has to do is bottleneck the zerglings for a second while the hellions come back and reinforce, but again he's microing this at the same time, so shit's falling apart a little bit. Like, this is when games get really chaotic, so you don't always play perfect. The fact that he stands there and gets surrounded is a bit painful. He'll still be fine because he has Hellions to kill these Lings. But, at the end of the day, that was a lot of damage done by Raynor. And I would say Raynor, in my opinion, got the better of that trade. Because Raynor just killed the entire reinforcing army. He threw away his entire Zergling army, but he killed... The tank, he killed all the marines, and he killed a couple of the hellions. And he killed the reaper. He got a good trade there, and he killed some SCVs, and he pulled the mineral line. He got a great trade there, realistically. That was a good trade for Zerg. But on top of that, he also killed the tanks over here and all the bio. That makes this trade now for Zerg like go from good to great. Because, yeah, losing the hatchery sucks, but killing, resetting three fucking tanks out of the game, and killing... 100% of the Marines out of the game at 7 minutes is huge. Right now, this Terran could have, like, 24 Marines. About 24 Marines with the build he opened up with. Like, 20 to 24 Marines. And now he's got, like, 3. He's got... No, he's got... Nine. He's got more, more... Where the fuck are the other ones? He's still, sorry, I didn't even see those. He's got Marines still standing on top of the tank. I actually thought they were all dead. But he's got a couple of Marines still standing on the tank. They're, like, right underneath the medevacs. Either way, though... The Marine count has been reset super hard. So this has been a great overall bounce of damage from uh, Raynor. And Klim, I would say Klim mitigated the damage pretty well too. But uh, I do think out of the out of that trade, who I would say would played better there, I think Raynor played better. Uh, I think Klim outplayed Raynor at the start of that, and then I think Klim fell apart a little bit, and then Raynor took the advantage at the end of that. And that goes to show you that Ra that Raider is playing the map to the way I think you sh that I think is probably the best to play it, which is a small map, play aggressive, tons of counterattacks, be annoying. He's doing a really good job of that. And now we got Hellbats with uh, another run by. Yeah, dude, these are fucking run bys, man. So I'm gonna back it up for a second, and I'm gonna see what uh, Raider saw. What he did that? Did he just watch the medevac unload here, and then he just set up a counterattack like right here? That counterattack like right there or something? One marine dies. Oh, he sees. He saw that. So he actually poked with the lings forward for a second. I bet Klim probably was. I don't know. Did he see that? Let's see if Klim saw that. I want to see what if Klim saw that one little minute, minor second of Ling poke. That was super fast. That was very fast reaction time by Rainer, by the way. That was super good. He's not looking at it. 
He might have looked at the minimap, which is why he just looked at the screen right after it happened. But like just now, Ling's went boop boop. They poked in and poked back out. And that that immediately, like one second later, what does Raynor do? He goes like this. Okay, counterattack with Ling's. Let's go in the, in the fucking third base again. So that's a super fast reaction by Raynor. That was very, 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 very good. Because there is a there is a brief moment in Terran when Terran attacks. So there's two reasons why this is really effective and why it's hard for Clem. Number one, Clem just lost pretty much his entire army. Okay. And number two, he's still trying to get aggression done to control the map because if he does nothing, it's get, Zerg is going to run away with the game. That's just how TVZ is. If Terran sits back for too long, Zerg is like becomes crazy. So Clem is like, okay. I just lost a bunch of shit, but here we go. I'm going to try and do an attack. And what, and what he's doing in the process of this is his build over here in his third base has been disrupted like twice already or once. It's been a little bit annoyed already. Uh, and then secondly, the fact that all of his units died, he's pulling everything from his base. So right now his base is completely undefended and new rallies are going to defend his base. But they're not done yet. So if time was on Clem's side here, like if, if Raynor gave Clem like 45 seconds... By the time these things got here, there'd be like another 15 Marines standing there and maybe like two tanks or not, not two. There'd be one tank and like a second one halfway done. So it'd be like, and maybe even like a uh, medevacs would be almost done. If, you know, there was some time that went by here, but because Raynor did not wait to counterattack Klim when the army was pushing here, but instead he saw Raynor saw Klim the second he was leaving his base. Because, guys, let me, let, let me tell you something. This is contested area. This is Klim's base. This is Raynor's base. That's how small this fucking map is. These are like little grid spots. And this is Raynor territory. And the fact that Raynor is still leaving, his, like he's still in his territory, about to go into the middle of the map with all of his bio, but his Hellions revealed what he's doing because they're faster. And the medevacs also took a, a turn up to the top. It's very, it looks very attack oriented, but Raynor reacted to it super quick and goes, okay, let's set up an immediate counterattack. He maximized, like Raynor maximized time super fast, which allowed him to fuck over the third. And in doing so, it sets Klim back super hard. Like getting your third disrupted again and again and again, starves your ass out to where you're like feeling always like you have no money to work with fucking anything. It sucks. If your third is never interrupted, it feels great for Terran. And now, Klim is in the process of moving forward to go attack. And as he's about to attack the base, he's getting counterattacked. That was a... Like, you gotta realize, the fact that Raynor's already at the third base, and Klim is about... Like, they're both they're both about, about to attack each other at the same time. That was very good movement by Raynor to do this. That was super good, super intelligent, super effective. Because an average Zerg player, an average Zerg player would not initiate this counterattack until this showed up on creep or started hitting the hatchery. And because Raynor, or sorry, because Klim did a decent job of being annoying with the creep spread early on in the game with the Hellions, and also killed this base which had creep allocated to it, which forced Raynor to take a different base, so this base has no creep allocated to it, because you can't do everything all at once. You have to like pick and choose where you want to invest your time early in the game. This is super blind for Raynor if he was defensively waiting. But he wasn't. He was constantly poking Ling's forward and backward, forward and backward. And he saw this without alerting Klim that he was really... Like, Raynor didn't just run into this army and attack it. He poked it and went, oh, look, he's moving out. Immediately turned around. And Klim was like, no alarms are sounding here. I'm just going to go attack that base now. So... Again, an average Zerg player would be initiating this counterattack if that was what their plan was. Now, as they see this, which would be this would be here at like 8 minutes and 2 seconds or like 8 minutes and 3 seconds. Like 10 seconds later. Not right now. And 10 seconds later would mean a tank would be sieged on the high ground. All these Marines in the barracks would be like standing right there or right here. And they would be able to, like there would be like 12 Marines and a tank, which would easily shut this down. But right now there's just not enough shit because... As it is here, it's already... Like, the Lings are already at the third as the Marines are at the fourth. It's fucking crazy. That is actually insanely good. Like, this is... That is exactly why Raynor is so fucking good. He is really good at being aware of what the hell's going on in the game. And he spots shit before it happens. And he's doing this shit, like, ten seconds faster than an average Zerg would. So it makes this way more effective because there's just... 
uh, Clem literally had to send everything to do this attack. And the new units he has are not enough to just guard the mineral line. It's going to cause another pulled mineral line to run away. Which sucks, because that's so much mining time that gets lost. And now what's happening is, look at the, the SV is building the barracks. It's interrupted again. Like, he, he actually just pulled... Uh, so, okay. So, Rainer actually pulled back. It's fine. Either way. He definitely it was annoying. Effectively here, this was overall good because he pulled mineral line. He killed an SCV. He lost nothing, really. That's like one Zergling, and he got out. Now, over here, we'll look at this fight. So, back on Klim's side now to attack. Like, Klim's attack, that is. We have Queen's Banes with Speed. And these Banes with Speed are... They even have Bane Speed, even though he didn't... Even though Raynor didn't prioritize it. He already has Bane Speed for this fight, so... It's totally fine. And he's already got 2-2 two, two, two going up. Around the same pacing as uh, Clem's 2-2. Two, two. So this fight looks good, in my opinion. For... It really comes down to micro, honestly. But I would say it looks good for Raynor. And the reason why is because there are no tanks. There are no Widow Mines. It's just Marine... And there's also no Marauders. It's just Marines and Hellbats. Which are all susceptible to Banelings. So unless Clem micros this like a fucking god... This is going to be a super easy defense for Raynor. Yeah, that's super hard to micro that. You can't split every Ling like, or every Marine individually all the time and also focus every Bane. It's so much easier when you have Widow Mines or tanks to like run back on top of, which actually start whittling down the Bane Ling count. Uh... <coughs> And then also on top of that, Clem had the, you know, the little poke that just happened a second ago where he was also dealing with that. And look at this. All these SCVs are still idle because what happened again is both players did two attacks at the same fucking time again. That happened last time and it happened again. And I feel like that's something Raynor does as well, where every time the Terran takes a fight against other Zergs, Terrans go, okay, I'm going to take a fight. Against Raynor, Terrans have to go like this. Okay, I'm all, every time I take a fight, I'm going to take two fights. Because this dude is always going to fucking counter my base. And he's going to be annoying. And he's going to fuck my base up. So, that's again, that's just like a testament to Raynor being super good. That's why he's such a good player. Uh, and Clem is... like I, the, the game is honestly still pretty mostly even. I once again still give the edge to Raynor because Raynor has shut down this aggression this time. He killed all the Marines and all the Hellbats. And no drones really died. And the hatchery's not dead. And what that did, essentially, is it reset the bio to a decent degree once again. It's not fully dead because there was no counterattack that fully committed to another army down here. Because there was a tank on the high ground. That helped a lot. If there was no tank on the high ground, I bet Raider would have stayed. So good job by Clem to set that up. But it's becoming such a annoying disruption that SCVs... Specifically, um, one mule and eight SCVs are literally just sitting there doing nothing. Because they were right-clicked just barely off the middle line. So they're just fucking sitting there. Which sucks. Because those things have been sitting there for... Like, they've been inactive mining since, like, 7.53. So that was, like, 20 seconds of no mining. Or 25 seconds of no mining. Which is a lot. Now behind this... Burrow. And that's it. For Raynor. He's just getting Burrow and uh an oh, infestation pit. Okay. And then Clem is going for just now going in the drop phase. This game could honestly still go either way. A fourth command center for Clem, I like it. He's uh pr just progressing. It's basically just been like a test for both players to see if either one would just die. And they're both so good that neither one has died. Nice little pickoff. That's like a, like a tiny little win for Clem right there. He kills like three lings and then loads his medevacs, losing nothing. It's very minor at this point in game, but it you know shaving little bits of Zerg off here and there is nice. Here comes a Liberator. We got just more bio. We got and here comes the drilling claws. Okay, so there is now a there's going to be a swap, maybe even like tank and widow mine. But there's going to be in, like the second factory, and you can see that he's going re uh, drilling claws as he makes the second factory. So this could totally be a combination of tanks and widow mines with the reactor on this factory, or it could be tanks up until drilling claws is done, and then pure widow mines. It could be either one. I would say either one would work as well, because 
there are no lurkers. There are no roaches. And there are... Uh, Ba- yeah, basically that's it. Like no roach ravager, no lurker, no hydra. You don't need to have tanks if there. Uh, like it's not mandatory to have tanks if there's no roach or hydra based tech and everything that follows it up. But if there were lurkers in this game, and they, let's say there was a scouted like lurker den, he would definitely fucking need tanks, and maybe like tank liberator essentially. But the fact that it's just pure link bane and it's an infestation pit, which means it's probably going to be for a faster hive, which it is. Uh. You could bypass tanks entirely if you wanted to and just go straight into Widow Mines if you really wanted to. That would still work because Widow Mines would take decent trades. Bio Mine would be still good trades against uh, Ling Bane. This is good creep killing by Clem. He, uh, I would say, I would say that was like a tiny advantage for Klim there, but I do think he could have maybe lost a little bit less if he would have loaded a little bit faster. But look at this, look at this group over here. There's a nice little potential counterattack group ready to go. There is a decent army here for Klim though, waiting. But this army right here is just fucking ready to pounce either on a flank or on a counterattack. That was really good by that was really good by Clem. He just focus fired every Baneling, and he's on Stimpak now, in a weird position where Rainer is trying to attack right here, like in this area, and it's making his legs super stupid on the low end because there's a cliff here with Marines and the legs are stacking super hard. They're not trying to surround; they're trying to they're trying to push through, so they're getting really shitty surface area. So that's this is a great attack by Klim. Klim could just sit here on Stimpak A move because all the Banes just died. So that was, and I was also Rainer just not expecting that. Rainer was probably like spreading creep or he was, uh, you know, injecting his hatcheries or he was setting up a fucking Ultra Hydrogen, whatever. He was doing other shit, which is why he didn't react to that. But I would say now what Rainer should do is run the fuck away. Just run away. Otherwise, way too many Lings are going to die. And what Clem wants to do is just stim pack and stand his ground and just don't fucking stand here for so long until like another army comes up and bailings him in the back or something. So that was a great engage. That was a super good uh, little punch by Clem. Sniping the Banes like that and then just fucking over the counterattack. That was like 20 links that just died and like four Banes. That was really effective and like no Marines died. So that was really good trade uh, for Clem. And then he's going, still, he's going into a fourth base. He's going into a reactor factory with drilling claws, as we thought. It makes sense. Uh, and yeah, and now he's getting another barracks. He's just sticking to the bio. It's all G. Nothing really to be to be said there. Rainer is going into a hydrogen now with a hive. So it looks like Rainer is going to be going for Hydra Ling Bane Lurker. This is a good fight for Clem. Yeah, as I was say, Rainer should totally back up. It's off creep. It's a choke point, and Clem just read. Whenever a Terran does this, there's always two stages of Terran. There's one stage of Terran with harass, 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 harass. But the second the Terran pulls the trigger, it goes macro clump. Join up with my harass. As a Zerg player, you got to really respect that and get the fuck out of there. Like, do not stay there and fight that. Because if you stay there and fight that, you will lose everything. So now that the army has converged, this goes back to the stage where if Rainer wanted to, he could launch another counterattack because look at the Terran's base. We got a bunker with nothing inside of it. It's starting. We got one tank. Nothing else. We got a depot door with nothing at it. We got one tank that just popped out of a rally, and this tank is also popped out, and it's just like walking to the base. He got siege this tank too. So the point is, is that's like that, that that's like that moment where the Terran just grabs all their existing units and goes, "Let's go, let's go attack," and now all the new rallies will once again fill the doorway in. So if you are really, really fast and on top of it, where you can pounce on the Terran with a counterattack, just like Raider did earlier, 
uh, when the Terran is, has like nothing defending because he just reconverged everything to go attack. That's that moment where you have openings that fucked SCVs up and, and things like that. And will Raynor take advantage of it? I don't know. I would say probably not because Raynor just made two mistakes. So the momentum shift has gone to Klim. The first mistake was really, it really wasn't a mistake by Raynor, but it was more so a really good move by Klim to kill off all the Banes here and just wipe out a bunch of Zerglings. That sucked ass for momentum for Raynor. And the second one, the actual mistake I would say by Raynor was, was when he went down the cliff here to kind of poke around with his Lings. And I think he overextended just slightly. And he took a little bit of a loss. Like he took a little bit too many losses, I would say. It's not going to end the game, but I feel like it takes away his ability to counterattack. Like he just lost about a series of like 40 links or like 50 links in the matter of like the last 40 seconds. Like 50 links. Imagine if 50 links never died. And those 50 links were now sitting right there and they were going to go fucking attack this Terran. That's totally different, right? At 50 links getting to the base right here, just running down right now. This tank would fucking die. All these SCVs would have to pull and so on and so on. So that's that would be huge. Also, just to throw it out there, I think. Just to throw it, like some people also like I'm, I'm thinking about why he did it too. It wasn't really a mistake. It was actually an attempted move by Rainer and a good reaction by Clem, because this is this is why he did that. It wasn't just like oh, Rainer's playing bad. Look at this. See that? That's why Rainer did that. So the first one right here, like I said, was good by Clem, right? That was super good by Clem. Because he just saw an opportunity and he fucking owned Raynor for that. And he, he took a little bit of a lead. And like he, he got an advantage from that one little bit. But I do think that Raynor was trying to bait what looked like an attack. Burrowing Banelings on the ramp at the same time. And then retreating. And going, oh god, oh no, I just lost like 20 lings on down the ramp and I'm running away. As fifty like 30 Marines stack up on the ramp and they just fucking explode to two Banes. That's what he tried to do, but Clem is a smart boy, and he scanned it. Watch. That is actually why Raynor did that. He's just trying to abuse Bailey bombs. So watch the Banes very closely right here. I guarantee he does this because he's just trying to set up a Bane bomb. And I think that I think that Clem is smart enough to know to go. Okay, Raynor, I know you're not doing this attack because this is fucking awful. You, why the fuck would you ever attack me like this? It's because you're baiting the shit out of me trying to set up some Bane Bombs. Like, I, I know what this is fucking... You're not... You're, okay, you're not this silly, okay? And this is just like one of those moments where, like, Raynor's bluffing, but then Clem calls it and he knows, okay, fuck your Banes. I'm not running over that shit. Because watch, watch the Banes. Watch the Banes. And Burrow. See that shit? He's attacking and retreating. Bane bomb. So Clem is super smart because he can predict. He like he knows. He saw. He sees through the fucking facade of the bullshit. He knows what the gameplay here is. And Raynor's just trying. Like this doesn't cost Raynor the game. But if Clem fell for it and walked on top of that, and was like, hey, oh god, I just lost thirty Marines. This base will get denied. It would have to lift off and leave. And then Terran would be in that position where he's starving again. And even furthermore, if Klim lost, like, let's say let's say he sieged his tanks. And he's like, oh, shit, I sieged my tanks. And the fucking, uh, whatever it's called, the, the, the Ling Bane just blew up all my fucking Marines. And now that my tanks are exposed. If his tanks also die because he sieges, he throws the entire fucking game away and Raider just wins. So... Little cute move by Raynor and super intelligent response by Clem. And he's going Lurker Den. Literally not even getting Hydra upgrades. He doesn't even give a shit about Hydras. It's just straight up Lurker Ling Bane. <laughs> and I do think Lurker Ling Bane is a great response, by the way, to this. Drilling Claw, Reactor. This Widowmine bullshit, Lurkers are super good against. But, look at Klim. Look at Klim. He's super smart as well. I think Klim is actually a really good Terran, man. He's still making tanks. He's not just going, you know what, fuck it, I'm going mass Widowmines, bitch. 
Does he even know about the Lurker Den? No. Does he know about the Hydrogen? No. He doesn't know about it, but maybe he's expecting it because he's like, you haven't made any Mutas. You haven't made any Roaches. You haven't made, obviously, no Roaches. You haven't made any Hydras. You haven't made any Mutas. Either you're going Ultralisk or you're going Lurkers. Possibly. Like, maybe Muta's late game for or some weird shit. Or maybe Broodlords. Like, there's there's still some options that Zerg could do. But the fact that he's still making tanks up until this point gives him the ability to actually respond to Lurkers without just being like, Oh, I'm fucking dead. Because if all he had was Widowmind Marine and suddenly, like, eight Lurkers or ten Lurkers appear with the Lurker upgrades, that would be a terrible spot for Klim to be in. Terrible spot. But still, good good counterplay by Clem. He took advantage of the of the few link kills he got, you know, like the 50 links we talked about a second ago, and he didn't allow himself to be bailing bombed. And now, what does he do? Is he goes over here, he scans, kills some creep, and he wipes out the initial fourth base of Rainer. But look at this. As always, remember what we said a second ago? If you fucking attack Rainer, and you you're a Terran player, and you go, I'm gonna attack Zerg. You might as well be ready for two attacks, two fights at the same time, because. Look at this. Here comes the timing, the move out to attack Rainer. And what does Rainer do as a response to this? He fucking counters. These counters are incredibly annoying for Terran. And what did Rainer just do? Or sorry, what did Klim just do? He just sent his entire army to attack. Rainer is actually really patient about sacking bases he goes okay Terran I know how you play you always fucking move all your units out all at once when you're ready to do your timings so every time you do that I'm gonna sack whatever base you kill on the edge of my base and I'm gonna absorb you if you go deeper into my base but at the same time I'm gonna kill one of your bases I'm gonna go fuck your base up so this counterattack shit is super effective by by Raider and the fact that his legs are really well upgraded makes it even better Look at this. Three Marines come down here with one tank to try and stop this. No. All these SCVs are dying. And, it, and if, you ever, if you ever watch a player like this and you ever wonder, Vibe, why is it every time I watch Raiders counterattacks on a Terran player, they always do damage. Like he makes the SCVs run away. He fucking kills a bunch of workers. Why does he do damage? Whereas, whenever I do counterattacks, it just they just get owned. Why is that? It's because he's very fast about making the choice every time to just go. As soon as the Terran moves out, he goes. He doesn't wait, he goes. So every time he does a counterattack, the Terran has nothing at his base. And here's the crazy thing. As a Terran player, if you play against someone who has the macro potential of someone like Raynor, if you don't send your entire army out to attack the Zerg's base, and you instead only send, like, 50% of your army and you leave 50% to defend the entire time he's going to just run your fucking army over repeatedly because he does not respond by doing blind counterattacks. he responds by knowing where your army is and he goes yep counter time yep counter time counter time counter time counter time he always counters with what he sees he doesn't counter blindly he doesn't just guess he's not like well oh, right now sounds like a good counterattack timing let's do that he goes oh okay you're committed let's fucking rotate around you so, Rain, uh, yeah, Rainer's super, super, super good and super smart about how he counters. And then now he's backing up and just regrouping new Ling Bane while he gets ready to deal with Klim's still existing push. <laughs> and the counterattack got burrowed. And he's still here. He's still being annoying. It's round two. And it, it's, it's just chaos, right? Amongst the chaos of two fights at the same time, Raynor decided to go, you know what? Let's burrow like eight links down here. And now it's making the making Clem have to pull the middle line again. It's fucking annoying. It's just causing more an annoyance. And here's the crazy thing. 
This movement by Raynor is also a good initiator for this movement. So I would not be surprised if 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 Clem's done a good job of defensively setting up this push. Because if I guarantee, I fucking guarantee, if Clem's army was mostly grouped up right there. When Raider uppered his lings right there and went, hey, look at me. Look at down at the bottom of the map with your lings. Look at the lings at the bottom of the map. I'm attacking your SCVs. Go pull them. As soon as he did that, he would have jumped all over the bio with Ling Bane. I guarantee he would have. But because, again, like, obviously Raider has a brain, so he's not. he might not do that this time. And the reason why is because Klim, who also is good at this game, has defensively prepared his push in a way where he's not just balled up with his bio in front of the fucking Zerg's base. Instead, he's already scattered and spread defensively with tanks, and he's only poking with a few marines. This is actually the most annoying way to deal with Terran. Like, it's, it's, it's the most annoying way to play Terran against a Zerg, where you go, I'm killing your fucking drones, and I'm slowly killing your hatchery, and then if, if this ever dies, it's barely even noticeable to your army, because it's not fucking 30 marines, it's 5. And all you gotta do is you just get the Zerglings to chase you, you load up into the medevacs, and suddenly tanks shoot all the Zer uh, Zerglings. So this is a really, 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 really well set up attack by Clem. And this is a really, really cute move by Rainer. These guys are both playing really well. Like, it actually goes to show you that you can, if you break these games down, you can tell, totally tell why they're fucking pros. And they're really good compared to the average player. Like myself. And he burrowed again. He forced another scan. And now look at this. We got a potential, once again, flank and or counterattack. And if this planetary wasn't already done, this counterattack would fucking own a bunch of SCVs. But it's a planetary already, so I imagine these lings are either going to go up. Probably not up, though, because it goes deeper into the back of the Terran's army. Unless he, unless Rainer plans on doing a sandwich, they're probably going to go down and run to the left. But Ray, like, Klim's about to fuck up a bunch of Zerglings, essentially. So that was really good zoning by Clem right there. Super good zoning by Clem. But then look at that. In the middle of all this, there's a drop going on with Uno Mines in the natural. This is a really annoying this is this is why Clem is so good, by the way. He can do multiple attacks at the same time, and these fucking Widow Mine drops are so annoying. Uh he's got another he's still defensively set up. It's a little bit more exposed this time than it was before. But it's it's still he's still got the tanks all set up over here and the bio set up over here. He's reconver reconverging all of his bio that spread out to zone the lings, and then uh you know all that stuff. But Rainer, Rainer has a good amount of uh, stuff. He's got nice lurker. He's got viper. He's got ling bane, <clears throat> kind of like scattered around. He's or like just, just in the area. He was going over here to deal with the widow mine drop, and now suddenly it's in here. But he had the foresight to run into the third base and burrow and you know what this does if Raider doesn't or if uh, Clem does not realize if Clem does not realize oh there are links burrowed at my middle line and this this is where this is where a really high level player is made different than a average player most players that are zerg would do this right now and burrow or they wouldn't burrow they would just run over the third and be like well i guess i'll just kill some scvs right now juicy but realistically guys if scvs die right now it's not going to be the end of the world and you want to know why there is zero pressure on Klim's side of the map. There's zero pressure right now. Zero. All the pressure is on Raider's side. So there's two options for these lings. Number one, you kill SCVs. You maybe kill like eight SCVs and then all your lings die. And you just killed his SCV count from 62 down to 56. Uh, or 54. Jesus, I can't do math. Uh, yeah, 54. And that wouldn't be that big of a deal because... Clem is still making SCVs after SCVs, and he would just replace that in 24 seconds because he has four commits and he's pumping SCVs at 12 seconds of time. So in 24 seconds, he'd already be caught up to where he just was. And then all the counterattack lings would be dead. However, Raider's burrowing them, and if Clem does not realize this because he's in the middle of doing a Widowmine drop and also in the middle of doing a fucking siege push, which means, and he's also just finished zoning the lings, 
which means there's three things going on all at once. So there's chances for things to slip into darkness and not be realized. What Raider can do is he can use these links in about 30 seconds from now or something like that to go like this. I'm about ready to bounce, to chump, to just like pounce on this fucking army. But how about I just go up, bro? Your SUVs are under attack. And then Raider Klim goes like this. What? Oh, shit. Pull. Meanwhile, abduct, abduct, kill, 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 whatever. Blinding cloud, engage, fucking lurkers killing everything. Like, Raider could use that as like a trigger and initiation to like set the fight up. To make Klim look away from the fight so that the second Klim looks back the fight, it's fucking panic everywhere and everything's dying. As opposed to Klim just smoothly fucking setting the fight up and like killing Zerg units. It changes the whole pace of the fight. So that was fucking like genius 200 IQ shit right there by Raider to Burrow right there. It seems like you shouldn't because you're like, ooh, an open mineral line, let's kill it. But this is so much more value than eight SCVs. And Klim didn't realize. And then as soon like I guarantee this just before this army engages, watch these lings up row again. To make Klim look. So he's not fully engaged yet. He's still not fully engaged yet. He's like running around being indecisive a little bit. But look, watch, watch the lings. I bet he will do it. I'm gonna watch the fight in a second here. Because it's it's still not happening. He just upbrowed the links. He just upbrowed the links. He still has not taken the fight. He's he's been kinda like poking back and forth trying to like cover the hatchery. But he just upbrowed the links. Watch Klim's camera. It's going back to his base, and now look at Raider's camera. He will probably attack. Okay, he's being non-committal. He's like he's like respecting it. But the idea was there. It, it's super cool. Like that's actually something that's like high level as fuck. And he burrowed again. God, he's fucking annoying with Zerglings. This is super annoying. He just keeps distracting the shit out of Klim to set up better fights. And indirectly what this has also done is it's relocated a fuckload of Clem's units. So we're talking about a matter of, uh, an amount of like 10 Zerglings, guys. That was like 10 Zerglings or so. 10 Zerglings in that mineral line. That is five supply. And even though the plan that I just talked about didn't go all to plan for Raider because Clem's really good. So Clem actually dealt with it pretty well. Look at how much supply... Rainer has indirectly made Klim allocate to defend this. There's 15 Marines just in that area alone. There's two Marauders that stint back down here. There's a Siege Tank down here. There is a widow mine, two Widow Mines down here. And then there's the rest of his reinforcements right there again. So right now, Klim has like all this army combined, probably like 50 supply sitting at his base, army-wise. Probably like 50 fucking supply army-wise, or like 44, somewhere around there. It's a lot. So this army is not that big. It's just a bunch of marines and some medevacs and a couple tanks. This army is not that big. And if Raynor fucking pounces on it, yes, the medevacs could load up and boost away. And a lot of them probably would get away. But if these vipers get in range before that happens and maybe abduct like three of them, that's like 30 supply dead right there. That could, this could definitely fuck, this could be a, this could be a huge fight for Raynor. Because even though he didn't get to use the trigger mechanic of the Zerglings, <clears throat> he's just separated the Terran army pretty drastically because of the annoyance that those Zerglings are causing. And we'll see if, if Raider wants to go for it or not. These tanks are on siege, so those tanks are definitely dead. And now look, he's going for it. <clears throat> and then he backs off. And that, that was really good. I would say that was super good for Raynor. And the reason why... because it, The reason why that was super good is because... That was a bunch of damage just added into the medevacs. To the, those uh, parasitic bombs, which was fine. It's just damage to the medevacs. But he also just wiped out a chunk of the army of Terran. When the army of Terran was spread. Because it was so paranoid about Zerglings. And now look, now that the Zerglings are dead... There's no units here anymore. They've all reconverged up top. And these are new rallies. So, Raider might do it again, all over again. He might just do another round of it. 
And these Banes from way earlier in the game might actually become effective right now. Oh my god. Also, I don't think, I, I honestly don't think that Raider would have ever done that fight like that, by the way. I don't think Raider would ever take this fight like this. He's getting greedy with Baneling Bros. This game. I don't think Raider would... See, he sees this fight, and I, I don't think that he would ever go, you know what? I have four Banelings. I have four Banes. I got some Lings. I got some Hydras. Let's take a fight against this right now. I don't think he would ever do that. But the only reason why he did that is because he was trying to take the fight before Terran scanned right here. Because if Raider engaged this army and, and Clem ever at all backed up, he would back up into Banelings and blow up. So he all all Raider was trying to do was like push him, push push Clem into the fucking mainlings. That's all he was doing. And the second the second fucking Clem scans, Raider goes, Oh shit, okay, let's leave. Let's run away. So he fucking scans and he goes, Okay, no, you know what? This is bad. Let's leave now. That was not worth it. That was actually a little bit of a delayed runaway, but still. Like That fight was not good, other than the fact that you're trying to get some main hits. That's the only reason why he cho chose to take it. And there was another attempted counter right there again. He killed the tank. This is all once again during the fight. Look at this. Burrow again. Just keeps fucking in the middle of chaos. Every time attack happens, there's always a counter attack. In the middle of chaos. <coughs> in the middle of the chaos, there's a fucking group of lings just in the base being annoying. Group, group, like, so anyone who's ever watched a Rainer replay, like, I don't really watch many Rainer replays. This is, like, I think the first real one I've ever watched all, all the way through. But I, I already know he's really good. I know who he is. But I feel like anyone who watches his replays goes, Rainer's group four is fucking annoying. This is always his counter group, and it's just always being fucking obnoxious. Every time he gets attacked, group four is always in my base. <laughs> and Clem saw it, so he scans it. Nice abducts to kill the tanks. <laughs> and now look at look at uh Clem's factories. He actually rotated off of the reactor and just threw down it's like it's like a dead reactor now. What if you could actually do that? What if you could have a reactor tech lab and you could make three tanks at a time? Let's Blizzard, let's buff Terran. Come on, make it happen. Genius idea. I want three tanks at once. You have the one tech lab and then the fucking <laughs> You have the you have the reactor just pumping two tanks because it's a tech lab a tech lab attachment. Or at least two tanks at a time. <laughs> oh man. It's funny. Uh, but you know, like he's he saw you know lots of lurkers now. The tech has switched into lurkers, which is Terran is now fucking going heavy tanks. Makes sense. It's good. Liberators would also work, honestly. But tanks or liberator works. And then as as soon as the uh, the tanks break, the, the abducts Rainer pushes with uh, lurker Lingbane Hydra. Nice little lurker flank. Is that group four? It was group four. Watch, group four will be three lurkers. Four or four lurkers. Group four is all, like, repeatedly, Rainer keeps just making group four go counterattack, go counterattack, go counterattack, go counterattack. That's group four right there, dude. <laughs> it is three lurkers. 
He's just setting up annoying fucking fights. Ugh. Yeah, Raiders Group 4 is annoying. <laughs> And now all, honestly, I would say this, all Rainer has to do from here, because he just took some really good fights right there, all Rainer has to do realistically is discover this base up here. And the control aspect for Rainer is going to be huge. So, the, I mean, obviously this fight is pretty important right now because Klim is about to die. But these Lurker moveouts are just super effective. He's being so fucking... He's spreading them so much and he's just being so annoying with them. You know, you know what, honestly? You know you know how Raynor uses Lurkers? He uses Lurkers like two different units in the game. Defensively, Raynor uses Lurkers like Siege Tanks. He just spreads them all over the base. He plays like a defensive Terran player with Lurkers, which is totally fine. He doesn't just stack them all up. He spreads them like tanks. And then aggressively... He uses Lurkers like Dark Templars. He just spreads them out and does damage until the point when they die. And he forces scans with them repeatedly. And he keeps forcing scans throughout the game with Birdlings. So that Terran, honestly, Orbital Command energy-wise, has fucking no Orbital Command energy. And indirectly, because of these scans, well, right now it doesn't matter with the Lurkers, but early on with the Lings, the more times he has to scan the fucking Lings that keep burrowing, the more... That or the the safer the creep is because the less scans for creep there are. And there's a, see like what I mean like it's just constant lurkers everywhere. He does a really good job of like setting up lurkers all over the place. That was really well done with lurker. That was a cool lurker style. And he's always just making more and more and more and more in the middle of the fight constantly. This is basically, uh, I would say, Klim played it really well. Klim played really well. Yeah, he played like what your solid Terran looks like. Um, and Klim can definitely multitask and put the pace of a game in a really hard position. But I think Raider actually has a very good understanding of map manipulation. Raider manipulates the map really well all game. He's always counterattacking. He's always fucking counterattacking, and he always does a good job doing it too because he always knows when to do it because he's really good about being aware. Like his game sense is super good about seeing what Terran is capable of having at one point in time, and also he's aware. He's very aware of like where Terran should be at what point in time. Like is he pushing the middle of the map or whatever? That was really really good. That was a really well done game, and I I think also. Again, long story short, or like not long story short, but like g going all the way back to the beginning of what we talked about at the very beginning of this uh, game, this map is an aggressive map and it, it caters to aggression. And I honestly think that Raynor just did a little bit better job at being aggressive on this map with his constant counterattack bullshit. And then his lurker, his constant lurker rotations and like it, lurker, like three lurkers here, four lurkers here, three lurkers here, two lurkers there, four lurkers here, two lurkers here. Like that was super effective. It was really well done. Really, 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 really well done. And he only made three Vipers all game. He never even lost a single Viper. Like, these things abducted probably like seven units. And they also uh, parasitic bombed the medevacs. And they even blinding caught it a couple times. So, yeah, super good game by both players. Honestly. Uh, the counterattacks were super annoying. But, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a cool style. From, like, this is, a, like, I would say this is just a solid. Terran versus Zerg style for Terran. And this is a really cool uh, heavy ground focus style with Viper support by Zerg. Like heavy Ling Bane into like late, late Hydra Lurker. And it's not even a lot of Hydra either. Like he, he never had like 30 Hydras or 20 Hydras. He had like literally like 12 Hydras max each time. And it, was, it wasn't even like mass Lurkers. It wasn't mass Banes. It was always like little bits of everything. It was like 8 Banes here, 4 Lurkers here, 7 Lurkers here, Four Banes there. Eight Banes here. It was never like mass waves of Banes. It was just like peppered on units. Because a lot of times what it was was Raynor was so passive 
what, like he would just allow the Terran to overcommit while he counterattacked the Terran's economy. How many workers died? Not even that many. That's really that's actually pretty impressive that both players didn't lose that many workers when there was that much counterattack damage on both players. They just like constantly saved shit. So yeah, man, good shit. And burrow, burrow bailing bombs were really cool too. That was uh, that that could potentially just end the game. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to Plasmid for requesting another pro level replay analysis. And guys, good luck in your own games. I hope Terran players and Zerg players. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps you. I hope my breakdowns of both sides were interesting to you, and maybe you learned something or whatever. But much love. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, good luck and take it easy. I'll see you guys next time. Peace, everyone. See you.